When we started our businesses, we thought that because we were great plumbers, that would translate into being great business owners. But that couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, successfully operating a home service business has very little to do with the trades. Hey guys, I'm Tony Wally. And I'm Matt Baldwin, and this is The Coach's Corner, a podcast dedicated to helping you create a thriving business and stop thinking like a tradesman and start thinking like a CEO. Welcome to the show. What's up, brother? How you doing, man? Man, I've been waiting on a chance for us to just do a podcast out on the back porch. It's summertime. Our kids are, my kids are out of school. Your kids are almost out of school. I just love this time of year, man. And it reminds me of just good times. I'm glad to share a bourbon with you and smoke a cigar. Yeah. I'll take, I'll take uh, sharing a bourbon and smoking a cigar over sitting in my basement any day of the week. Any day of the week. And we're usually doing it right in the middle of the day. So mm-hmm. this nighttime thing is a good, good thing. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but there's all kind of crickets and night creatures just howling in the background but yeah we got the crickets going the tree frogs are going and uh my dog just pulled up to say hello what are you doing nice. hang on i'm gonna put my dog inside why don't you tell them what we're gonna talk about man right, go ahead well it's just summertime it's a good a good vibe you know it's um when I think of summertime, when I think of summertime, I think of because my son's 12 years old, he's been playing baseball since he was about three. So every summer we're doing something with baseball, at least at least from now until the end of, mm, I don't know, sometime in July. But. Yeah, we just had our first lacrosse tournament last weekend. <clears throat> yeah, things get kicked off and things get get going. No bedtimes really, and no waking up times except for us. You know what I mean? My kids sleep late, and they um, I don't know. Summertime is always just a just a they got they got practice where they where they have to go and um do theater and do baseball and basketball, but. For the most part, it's just a chill time, and it and it, rem, it reminds me of like so. One summer, my um, my son was getting started in 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 all stars, and there was a tournament close by my my parents' house <clears throat> where I where I grew up. So before the tournament, I was going to go over and hang out and visit with my dad, and. You know, my dad had been my dad had been feeling a little bit sick for a few months before this particular tournament. My son was about six at the time. And um I just something told me, I was like, man, I better go visit my dad. He's he's not feeling well. He's not he said he couldn't make it to the to the tournament, even though it was less than a mile from his house. And I went and visited him and um you know he was he was stomach was bothering him he was he was just just having a tough time and it had been like that for maybe i don't know a month and so i went and visited him went to the to the tournament everything was fine in my mind and like the next week my mom called and she's like yeah um your dad's got pancreatic cancer and i was like well shit man what does that mean like it ain't good. I know that. And, uh, so that's very perceptive of you. <laughs> thanks. Thanks. Um, and a couple weeks went by and like we went to the doctor and the doctor was like, you got like four months to live. And uh, I was like, Shh, man, that's heavy when you're in there, when you're in a room like that. My dad's the one that asked, "How long do I got?" And, my, I, and I was like, "Wait, man, hold on. You don't. I don't know if you want to know that." And um, so the doctor said, "And um, you know, I say that not to bring the mood down, but like summertime, in a way, it reminds me of of that particular season in my life. 
but every other thing in my in in the summertime is is good and fun but you know we act like we have all this time in the world to get stuff done you know and and for me in in particular up until that point no up until that point nobody really close to me had you know except for my grandmother had had passed away but like like the reality of hey everything that in life that you were going to do that's it you don't you got a finite amount of time to to get it done and uh you know i just that really hit home with me and like ever since then my dad passed away almost to the date when they said he had had you know four months to live he had already lived about three months of those four months so time just just passes really quickly and when we relate that to business and we're trying to get things done like things like the taskmaster and things like getting systems in place to just answer the phone, you know, like creating a, creating a price book. We act like we got all this time in the world to get it done, but you never know what's around the corner and what, what's going to happen to your business. If for some reason you're not, you're not around, you know, if you have employees, there has to be some kind of plan. And even if you don't have employees, you have loved ones that are going to depend on, that income. So it's really important to, to start getting systems in place. I mean, that's a pretty dire situation that I just described, but it, it, it's, it can happen, you know? Yeah, for sure. Um, man, I was just thinking about that and I don't know what's better, you know, again, not to bring the mood down and get all melancholy, but I don't know what's better. Is it better to know you have, four months to live or is it better to get hit by a bus and not know you know like yeah that's got to be tough just watching the clock ticking down and i'd like to think that i would be able to be the person that's like well i'm gonna embrace these four months and i'm gonna do everything that i want to do and i want to i'm gonna travel to europe and i'm gonna do this and i'm gonna do that and i'm gonna take my kids to the eiffel tower and but i don't know i mean i might be locked up in fear man yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a good question. Like, I don't know <clears throat> if somebody tells you that, like if somebody, have you ever, have you ever heard of the, the, those situations where like, this sounds off the wall, but there was a, there was a situation where a guy, they found a guy locked in a freezer and like a walk-in cooler. And he had every indication that he had fro- frozen to death, like his body, had all the symptoms of having froze to death, but the freezer was broken. Okay. So if, if you're in, if like, if he thought that he was going to freeze to death, he may, I mean, you know, if you can will something to happen, I don't know to what extent, but if you, if somebody with authority, like a, like a oncologist says, well, you got about four months to live. You're going to believe it. Right. Yeah. And you're going to start acting accordingly. And um, I don't know, man, that's tough. That's tough to, uh, would you want to get your affairs in order? Maybe. Or would you just want to not know at all? I don't know. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. But when we talk about business, like, that's a good reason to, not like you're going to die of pancreatic cancer tomorrow, but, I mean. I mean, I hope hope not. I hope not. I mean, I wouldn't, I, I would, I would hope not. Anything can happen, and every day that you let things go by undone is another day that... Hey, every professional tradesman knows you wouldn't build a house without a blueprint, right? So why are you trying to build your home service business without one? Grab your free copy of my Million Dollar Pro Blueprint. In it, I lay out the exact specs on how to build a successful, self-sustaining, and very profitable home service business. Don't risk years of waste of time and money and failure. Grab the Million Dollar Pro Blueprint now, and it's free. My gift to you for simply being a Coach's Corner listener. Go to milliondollarpro.com forward slash free and start building success. You know, it could possibly not get done. Well, yeah. And I mean, even like, let's take something stupid, for example. I was talking to one of my private clients earlier, and it's an interesting dynamic. It's It's a daughter and a 
father that are running the business together. And, uh, you know, I was, I was talking to her and I mean, this is going to sound like a silly example, right? But her father's in his sixties, I believe. And, but he still plays hockey every Thursday night. He's been in a hockey league for the last 35 years. Um, he feels like it keeps him in shape. It keeps him fit. It keeps him, you know, everything, right? He plays hockey and he's almost 60. Man, what yeah. a specimen. Seriously. Um, he plays every Thursday night for the last 35 years. Um, and I was talking to her and I was like, hey, we got a meeting tomorrow. And she was like, well, I wanted to talk about that because my dad got his teeth knocked out playing hockey. <laughs> I mean, I mean and he's got to go to the dentist. Um, and it was like, I mean, it's a small microcosm, right? But like, if I was going to get my teeth knocked out playing hockey, I'd want to know so I could go have a cheeseburger tonight because I'm not going to be able to bite a cheeseburger for quite some time, you know? Like, if I got no teeth, like, that's something I want to know about, you know? Yeah. Um, and if you relate that back to business, it's like, you know, you're putting off this taskmaster, you're putting off this taskmaster, and then, like, you know, let's just say, you know, there's a family emergency that comes up, you got to go travel for it, right? Out of the blue, tomorrow you got to hop on a plane, you got to go cross country or out of the country or whatever it is. And now you got two, three guys out there running service calls. And they don't have the playbook to come up with the plays, man. They don't know what prices they're supposed to be charging for this stuff. And now it's like, now it's just chaos, right? Wouldn't you want to have that done so that ahead of time, you have this this playbook set up so it's like, hey, toilet's running. Here are your three options. Here's the price for those three options. So that if they can't get in touch with you, they can actually do something rather than trying to come up with it on their own. Yeah, because every one of them is going to come up with something different. And the first time somebody says, well, hey, can I get a price breakdown for that? They'll probably give it to them because they'll yep. have to. You know, they will have had to come up with hours and our time and material, but you know that just goes back to like why are why are we why are we not getting it done? You know we keep we keep coming up with these excuses to not get systemized and not get um, in every aspect of business. And systems are what turn my business around, you know, and they're what turn your business around. I mean, it, it turned around dramatically and yeah. that's the reason and i tell people that's the reason my, my business was turned around i was we, we run it like a business we operate it systematically that's the reason so hey are those roofers next door using a circular saw that's a uh the not crickets but whatever you call them no they're not cicadas the roofers are gone man they were out there a couple of weeks ago at like six a.m. on a Saturday. Hey, a couple of weeks is a long time when you're trying to, when you're building a house around here. So what is that? The cicadas making noise? Yeah, rubbing their wings together. Yeah, I guess we had those. We had those like two years ago. We don't have them this year. You have them every year. Every year, and there's uh, whipper wheels. You, you can't hear them now. They're not. They're not out there right now. But there's the same whipper wheel uh, bird comes around and. and lands and stays out somewhere in the, in the trees you can hear them. it's pretty cool it's weird because growing up i remember having cicadas every year and now it's uh you ever see those things it's like uh it's on like tiktok and instagram and it's like it's uh it's like things you remember as a kid but like they're different now i forget the, the term for it it's uh Oh, what's the word that they use? They use a special like term for it, and it's like it's like almost as if you jumped out of an alternate universe. <laughs> this universe. I don't know. I know. I know this is not what you're talking about, but on TikTok, every now and again, I see those '80s commercials. It takes me back. <laughs> Things you used to buy. It's not exactly what I'm talking about, but um, there's like a term for it. It's uh. Nah, whatever. I can't think of the, the it's term. It's not deja vu, obviously. No, it's not deja vu, but it's like there's certain things like 
Like, you ever see the movie, the movie, uh, scary movie? Yeah. And Jordy wakes up, right? And they're referencing the movie The Sixth Sense. Mm-hmm. And he wakes up. Do you know what he says? No, man, I don't remember. Hmm. Well, like, there's this, this example of this thing where it's Shorty wakes up and he says, what I remember him saying is, I see white people. But in actuality, in the movie now, he says, I see dead people, just like in The Sixth Sense, and it's not as funny. <laughs> and it's like we jumped out of an alternate universe into this universe, and it's like things are just different. Well, there's uh, a spoof on the scary movie. I can't remember what it's called. Well, scary movie is the spoof. Oh, oh, spoof. it was Scream. Scream was yeah. the movie. Scary movie is a spoof of a bunch of different movies. Scream, okay. The Sixth Sense. Um. <laughs> So in the sixth Wayans sense, brothers. Yeah. So in in the sixth sense, Joel Osteen. Wait, not Joel Osteen. Uh, Joel Osteen, the preacher. No, yeah. not Joel Osteen. Uh, this really is a parallel universe. What's the kid's name? It's something similar to that. Yeah, the kid that, that was in the Bruce Willis movie. Yeah, the little kid. He wakes up and he says, "He we wakes up and he goes, I see dead people." Mm-hmm. And then when I saw Scary Movie, it was. Shorty wakes up and he says, I see white people. <laughs> but in actuality now, it's he just says, I see dead people, just like in the Sixth Sense movie, which makes no sense. Oh, well, I, I can say this. Like when we were little um, in elementary school, the cafeteria seemed super big. And then like I went back to my elementary school to go to lunch with my niece one time. And it was like, I could almost touch the ceiling. That kind of thing. I don't know what you call that other than no, not like that though. It's like I understand what you're saying there. It's like when you're on a football field when you're seven and when you're thirty seven, it's very different feeling. Yeah. Um no, this is like literally things that happened in your life that you remember vividly, but now they're completely different. Well, if anybody out there knows what, the yeah, hell. you can hit it down in the comments. Anyway, I vividly remember there being cicadas every year here. Every single year we had cicadas. There were the shells on the trees, and they were making that terrible noise that's going on in the background by you. And now it's like, there's this I figured it would add some ambiance, you know? There's this new thing that we get them every seven years or something like that. They're all down here, apparently. Yeah, they go down there oh, for right there in my backyard. Yeah, they go down there for six years, then they come back up here. I don't know. It's weird. Yeah. We we sure did get off Mandela track. Mandela effect. That's what it's called. Look what? it up on it's called the Mandela effect. Mandela effect. Did you and just Mandela remember that or did somebody walk out and tell you? No, I remembered it. It stems from a whole group of people remembering Nelson Mandela dying in the late nineties. Like, they remember the news reports of Nelson Mandela dying. Like, it was on TV, blah, 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 blah. And then all of a sudden, he was just alive until, like, 2015. And people were like, that's strange. I remember him dying in the 90s. And there's, like, a whole – you got to look it up on, like, Instagram or TikTok. I think there's I've heard about it now that you said Mandela. But I thought Nelson Mandela died a long time ago. Right? I really yeah. did. He died, like, five years ago. I don't, even, I don't know the exact year, but, like, everybody – like vividly remembers him like dying in the nineties. And then it's just like, no, he, he died like three years ago. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, but there's like a whole host of those. And one of them was the one I was describing from scary movie. Um, oh, like you're not the only one that thought he said that you, there's like a whole, Oh there, yeah. There's a whole, like, this is like a TikTok or Instagram, like rabbit hole that you can go down with all these different theories and it's like every single one of them, you're like, yes, yes. <laughs> I'll yes. have to look them up. I've done, that with that. Like, I've done that with like, uh, the, well, the ice wall. I've looked at that and, um, uh, what is it? What is the other one? I don't know, but yeah, I'll have to look it up. The Mandela effect. 
Yeah. There's one with like there's one with a movie where people remember like Shaq being in a movie called Kazam. Yeah. He was definitely in a movie called Kazam. But he wasn't. But he wasn't. No, he was in the movie called Kazam, right? You're gonna have to look it up. I there I don't remember the specifics, but it actually nope, he never was. It was not in a movie called Kazam. It was uh Oh, what's what's the guy's name? I'm not gonna be able to think of the actor's name right now. Freaking me out right now. But it was a movie called Shazam. Right? You thought he was a genie, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, it was a movie called Shazam, and it had the guy from uh oh, what's the Christmas movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger? Or maybe I have it backwards. Maybe Shaq was actually in Kazam and people yeah. Thought there was a movie called Shazam. Yeah, he was in a movie called Kazam. I don't know if he was. I have to think about oh, it. Let's look it up. But there was the but guy as far as Shazam. I don't know. No, there was like a. It's a weird thing. It's a weird thing where you like you. I don't know if it's like human memory remembering things differently or. It definitely is. I mean, the Mandela effect is real. I, I'll just have to look that up because I remember now that you said that. And people did think, like, I was one that thought, man, Mandela died a long time ago. No, it's, like, really a real thing. And it's, like, the weird thing is it's not just you thinking it. It's a whole group of people, right? Like, thinking the same exact thing. It's weird. There's a whole synergy around that thought. Yeah, there's a whole synergy around a bunch of different thoughts that, like, no, this is how it was. And then... It's not like that anymore. Automate your company's day-to-day -day scheduling, dispatching, and billing systems with Service Titan. Service Titan is the world's leading all-in-one field management software for home service businesses looking to improve efficiency and profitability. Just ask the Coach's Corner listeners who have made the move to Service Titan. Not only have they saved thousands by eliminating time spent on profit-sucking manual tasks, but they now have scalable processes in place to help grow their business for years to come. To check them out and to take advantage of special discounts for Coach's Corner listeners, go to themilliondollarplumber.com forward slash Service Titan. Do you think that a whole bunch of people think that they can just not get systemized in their businesses? And I think there's a whole bunch of people th that think that they can't, they could just not do their taskmaster and everything's going to be okay. But man, are they wrong? Definitely not like that. That's definitely one of the pillars of turning your business around. So tell us a little bit about how systemizing turned Wally Plumbing around so that we can really like drive home, just drive home the fact that like you have no time, you, you can't waste any time. You have to be doing these things now. Yeah. Well, the first, the, the most monumental thing was creating tasks on a flat rate. Um, on a flat rate system to where every task you do is plug and play. Um, and I just don't know how I would have gone any further or how I would have made it without it. And I talk to so many people that don't have it. They're trying to do the other steps, but they haven't implemented the, the flat rate and the taskmaster. And you just you can't, I guess you can, you can probably, I mean, I made it for, for, for a long time, semi successful, but it doesn't, it doesn't lend itself to giving you any kind of work life balance, you know, yeah, no, for a finite you're, period of time. Then you're, then you're getting calls while you're standing online for Space Mountain. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, that's one of the pillars of MDP is, um, you're working towards having a freedom type lifestyle where um, you don't have to be involved in every single decision, every single phone call and, you know, or any decision or any phone call, even the general manager can, can once we're systemized enough, they, they still answer the phone for sure. 
because the technicians, you know, need help, but they know, I know my general manager, Rusty knows what to say and he knows how to handle, um, any, any task he can pull it up and yeah, this is what it is. This is, this is the drop did. This is what we can do. Boom. And he really doesn't have to answer those type of questions. It's, it's really our, our dispatcher that, that answers a lot of those questions. So when you systemize, I know a lot of our, our guys that we, we deal with on a regular basis don't have general managers yet, but it's a building block process. And when you do have a general manager, but at that point, everything's going to be systemized to the point where you, even that person doesn't have to answer those type of questions, the price book type questions, yeah. because the guys are going to be gung ho on building estimates to build hours to make themselves money. And like all that, you have to, you have to build out the price book before you, before you do any of that. So let's take a snapshot, right? Let's go. If I can, can we travel back five years? And can you tell me what a typical day was in the life of Tony Wally? Five years. That was 2019. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that's before COVID we had the weird shutdown, but what yeah. was right before that, right before the, the weird COVID shutdown, what was, a, a, a typical day like in the life of Tony Wally? Well, I was going to jobs every day. I was in the call rotation. I think that we had five years ago, we had already gotten totally rid of new construction, but I was, I was in a truck. I was in the call rotation. Um, and we were making money. We just, we just weren't, there was no freedom for me or anybody else. You know, I was in a seven day call rotation, just like my guys. Um, and there was some turnover there because especially in the summertime months, um, being, being on call and being available to everybody is for seven days straight is, um, you dread that, you know, and when your turn is coming around, the tempers start flaring. And um, so there was some turnover there. Um, and just running ourselves ragged, you know, even even when um, I wasn't on call or even when my general manager wasn't on call, we were still getting calls from the people that were on call and it's just no rest. There's no rest. Um, so it was, right. it was, so let's, it was fast, let's fast forward. What does a typical day look like for Tony Wallen now? Um, well, I get up, I look at my QuickBooks. I do my daily QuickBooks work because I don't have a controller right now. I'm a controller. I don't, you know, I'm not in a big hurry to get a controller, but, um, and then I just, I talk to, to my general manager, not about, and I, you know, I'm, I don't, I don't, for the, for the longest time I would call and just say, well, how are things going? And now I just, I don't do that. We talk about other things. We're, you know, we go camping a lot, um, or we don't go camping a lot. We have gone camping a lot and we need to go camping more like, I like to talk about things like that, like what you doing this weekend or, or what, you know, what, what's a good camping spot to go to take the campers and, you know, have fun. I don't, I try to get out of talking about the plumbing part because it's really, he can handle that. They can, my, my company can handle all that. We could, I'm just used to asking him, how's it going? You know? <laughs> and, and he's used to telling me, but, quickly we're talking about other things fun things we like to we like the same restaurants downtown we we like to uh spend time going to brunch and our our wives enjoy that a lot so those are the kind of things i like to talk about but my day consists of making sure my company has what they need and they really don't need me for much at all in fact i get in the way more than i help yeah for sure. Because there's a little, I don't, I don't, maybe I don't 
maybe I don't believe that it, that I don't want it to be able to run without me or, you know, subconsciously, I definitely want it to be able to run without me, but you're just, when you get so used to solving problems every day for years, you end up creating a problem if there's not one. And if you have a good general manager, he'll tell you, Hey man, why are we creating fires? You know, I got enough fires to fight. Let's don't, yeah. let's don't create one for me to fight. Yeah. Me and you kind of had to work through that at similar times where it was like, I don't know what to do with my hands. Yeah. You know, like my it's hands have always been doing things, whether that's <laughs> fixing a toilet or fixing a shower or digging up a sewer line or then you progress and it's like angry customer bills not being paid right like there's always something that needs to be done yeah and then you kind of get to this point where it's like my hands don't have to do a lot right right so let me create something for my hands to do yeah it's kind of like, you know, like since we're going off the off the rails and talking about the Mandela effect and everything, you know how like We've been off the rails. Yeah. We yeah. episode one. Yeah. Welcome to the show. <laughs> um, so, you know how have you ever heard like when somebody gets like their 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 arm amputated or a, a, an yeah, extremity? Have, yeah, they have phantom pains. Yeah. Yeah. So in a way in a weird way, when your problems are delegated to somebody else and somebody else is perfectly capable of handling those problems, that's a, that's a new reality that, that it's not so easy to get used to. And so there's that phantom pain type situation where, what do you mean? There's not a problem. We got to create a problem. I'll create a problem. I, I can create a problem in a hurry. And that's what I mean by getting in the way. Yeah. Like when you hire capable, intelligent people, which I have, you know, it's fine to accept the fact that maybe they can do it without you, you know, and that's a hard thing. Absolutely. That's what I want everybody to get to. Yeah. Everybody that we talk to and everybody that we coach, everybody that we interact with, like if you're going to own a business, it doesn't need to just be a hobby and you don't need to be the one doing all the work all the time. You, you need to empower other people to do things. So yeah. you can have a freedom type lifestyle. Yeah. Um, and do it sooner than later. That's the whole point. I'll be talking about my freaking dad. Yeah. You know, and I was just trying to bring that full circle. I had a thought and then it was gone. You were still blabbering. Probably because I won't shut my and I lost freaking it. mouth. <laughs> yeah, but you know, just do it. Do it sooner than later. Like, what are we waiting on? How how you 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 say you want to spend time with your family? You talk to anybody that's a business owner. I just want more time with my family. I want to do. I want to. I don't want to miss these ball games. I don't want to. I don't want to miss these vacations. I don't want to be on the phone the whole time when I'm on vacation. I, I've been there. I can go on and on and on. I don't want to have to keep getting on the phone during dinner. So everybody thinks I'm the jackass that's on the phone during dinner that's ignoring my family. Well, if you say did all I, that, Did I ever tell you the story about my, my cousin? I don't know. So my cousin owned a plumbing company down in Florida for about 15 years. And... It was a 24 seven company and he had this one, uh, had this one account, the Dixie grill, and the Dixie grill, Dixie grill did a big Thanksgiving day dinner, right? Turkey, mashed potatoes, the, the whole thing. Well, every Thanksgiving, it would come to be that the Dixie grill would call because their lines were backed up. Cause they're putting those mashed potatoes and that turkey down the drain and you'd have to go out there and you'd have to jet the line, clear it out. Right. Mm -hmm. So this went on for a handful of years. Um, see the difference in his situation, and our situation is 
we don't do emergency service, right? And even if we did want, yeah, even. even if we did want to offer that, it would be one of our employees, right? That we're going and doing it. Yeah. But it was him every year. Middle of, like, he'd sit down for Thanksgiving dinner, phone would ring, Dixie Grill's backed up, right? Yeah. So it got to the point where him and his wife and his kids would just go have Thanksgiving dinner at the Dixie Grill. And the manager would come out and he'd tap him on the shoulder and he'd say, Hey, I don't want to interrupt you, but you know, when you're done eating, we have an issue in the kitchen. Can you come take care of it for us? They'd take the service truck out there to the Dixie Grill on Thanksgiving dinner with the two kids and him and his wife. And they'd sit down and they'd, they'd have their turkey and their cranberry sauce and everything. But at some point he'd get a tap on the shoulder from the manager and say, Hey, I got, I need you to take care of something. Yeah. And that is the perfect story for what most people allow their plumbing business to do to them. Right. That's designing a, designing a life around your business. Yeah. Instead of designing the business around your life. Yeah. And again, the business will design your life for you. Could we agree on that? Yes. If you don't do something, the business will design your life for you. And and that I can speak from years of experience from, from having, you know, going into business thinking I was going to be my own boss to s- shortly after that, having a bunch of general contractors that acted like my boss. So I went from having one boss to having five or six bosses because they were all yelling for me to get there to being handcuffed to the on call situation, not having a, not having a, a, a system of people answering the phone and booking the calls on and on and on. And it's because I had no guidance and no idea how to start building the business around my life. So for 14 years, the business designed my life for me and it doesn't have to be that way. I turned it around in a year you know, when we got on MDP, we were pretty much, I mean, you were a little bit ahead of me, but shortly after that, we became kind of running partners and we were, we were really, I mean, we had to put in a lot of work and a lot of worry constantly for a short period of time. Now that we look back at it and not that there's not things to worry about, but the systematic stuff that's going to give you a chance to step away and watch, uh, your business thrive. That's what you got to do. And you got to quit putting it off because God forbid there come a day where you can't work. Something happens. I've seen it. I've seen it happen time and time again, where plumbers get hurt and they just about lose everything because they can't use their hands to, to make money for themselves. And or even worse, they, they drop dead and Mm -hmm. their families just left to figure out what to do. Yeah, heart attacks around, I don't know if it's like that in New Jersey, but in Alabama, heart attacks and plumbers, I mean, it's, I can see where that's, where that's a trend because the stress, if you, if you take it all on yourself and you don't build a team out that can help you and can, and can form some kind of synergy to solve problems without you having to be the one everybody runs to, I can imagine that that could create a heart attack situation. Yeah, we had a guy here couple of years ago that he was just walking home stop stop for a drink at the bar on the way home and he was walking home and they just found him on the sidewalk someone's front lawn you know yeah and you never uh, know. he wasn't he wasn't that old he was in his early 50s you never know you right? never know just how we started this this uh, this episode with the story about your dad, where it's just like out of nowhere, hey, you got three months, you know? You don't have as much time as you thought you did. And you never do. Everyone thinks that they're going to live to be 120. It's just not going to happen. So whatever it is that you're putting off, 
in your business and you know you got to do it, stop acting like you got all this time in the world. Do it and you'll you'll free up the time that you have left. And I hope it's years and years of of doing what you want to do, but you got to you've got to put forth the effort. Work double time, part time, as Rory Baden would say. There's going to be a finite period of time where you got to work double time to get yourself to the point where um, you can have a little bit more freedom. So do it, and we'll catch you on the next one. All right. Hey, man. All right. Well, that does it for this episode of the Coach's Corner. Make sure to like and subscribe below, and make sure you join us on our next episode to continue to learn how to stop thinking like a tradesman and start thinking like a CEO. Thanks for stopping by.